Alrighty guys, good afternoon to you all here. It is about 2 p.m. Central Time. A little bit late making this video today. I was waiting on some SPC Outlook updates and boy do we have some significant severe weather uh, over the next 48 to 72 hours. Tornadoes, large hail, significant damaging winds across North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, and maybe even into Northern Iowa over the next three days here. So if you are in those three states, you're going to want to listen to the forecast toward the end of this video as we talk about uh, the potential for a huge wind bag event. Maybe even once again, the D word, the derecho word. We'll see what happens. I'm not quite sold on that idea yet. Uh, but we are looking at a very, very big severe weather event, uh, both potentially a severe weather outbreak both tomorrow and uh, going into Friday across those regions there. Once again, North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota people be listening up here, getting into Nebraska as well and into Iowa. We've got a lot going on here. So we're going to break that forecast down here in just a few minutes. I want to talk about the tropics here uh, first as we do have some updates here, some good updates, some positive things to talk about and also some not positive things to talk about. So uh, we're going to break all that down here, talk about what's happening here. I'll talk with the satellite imagery here first that we've got going on this afternoon. Decaying MCS here, a line of thunderstorms it's been moving through Missouri up here in eastern Kansas into uh, portions of Iowa. That will continue to weaken there, laying down a boundary in place for some general thunderstorms to kind of get going and around the Ohio Valley, the Ozarks later on this afternoon, not expecting any severe weather. Today's severe weather, very, very low. We'll talk about that here in a minute. I'm not expecting anything crazy today. We're not even going to do any live coverage today. I will have a live stream update this afternoon and tonight for you guys uh, just to talk about what's getting ready to happen tomorrow and going into uh, the next couple of days here. So we've also got our tropical system that we are watching here off the east coast. Uh, not a lot of organization but you can start to see some spin with it there. And what this is actually going to do now is it's going to go northeast out to sea. We were thinking initially we were going to see this move inland. It is now going to move out to sea. So we shouldn't see, uh, other than some heavy rainfall over the next 48 to 72 hours across South Carolina, North Carolina, and spots here, we shouldn't see too many widespread impacts for that. So that is some good news. We're also watching this little tropical system down here, this tropical disturbance. It's moving its way into the Gulf, which some ensembles do have developing. And right now we don't have an AOI, an area of interest from the National Hurricane Center down here in the Gulf. But I am still watching this very closely because some of the European ensembles as well as the GEFS ensembles do have a storm developing later on this weekend in that area. So we're going to keep you guys updated. The water temperatures are warm. There's not a lot of shear. This storm, you know, could pop up out of nowhere. So we're going to watch this very carefully for you guys. I'll keep you guys updated on that. Uh, but the main story over the next two days is going to be significant severe weather here. We'll talk about that here in just a second. I want to talk about something else, guys. We do have officially 96L here, or not 96L, 91L, I should say back over here into uh, the Atlantic Ocean. This is what is now going to become a fish storm. The GEFS ensembles and the European ensembles now both agree that this storm that we've been talking about over the last couple days, that big old orange blob the National Hurricane Center has issued, is going to go out to sea. We are not expecting any United States impacts from this as of right now. There is another wave that is coming off the coast of Africa. This is the one I'm watching. Both the GFS ensembles and the uh, Europe uh, European ensembles agree that this system is going to head toward the lower portions of the main development region. And these are the ones we got to watch because once these get into the Caribbean, you got a lot of scenarios that come out of that there. And some of the models are hinting at something maybe heading toward the United States late toward the end of next week. But that is over seven to 10 days out. We're not going to panic. We're not going to freak out as we've been talking about the last couple of days. All of these people that have been posting fear mongering model runs that are saying, oh, a major hurricane's coming to the United States this weekend. Well, that's wrong because that, as we expected here, that did in fact become a fish storm or is expected to become a fish storm. So we'll keep you guys updated. As always, the tropics can change. You guys know that as of right now, no United States impacts over the next seven to 10 days from anything uh, ongoing in the tropics past that point, we may have to start to get a little bit uh, watchful. Here's what the word I'll use here. So other than that, uh, we'll go ahead and talk about the National Hurricane Center up here, update here and talk about what's going on. And you guys can actually still see Tropical Storm Dexter continuing to work its way off to the northeast here. Not much going on. They also lowered uh, the AOI here percentage. We did have a 40% chance. We are now back down to a 30. So the less likelihood of this becoming something, and this is actually going to race off to the northeast. As we mentioned in yesterday's video, we were looking at a possible scenario on the GFS ensembles of a uh, tropical system or hurricane headed towards our direction. That is no longer the case. The European and the GFS ensembles both agree that this storm is going to head out to sea. We are not going to expect any United States impacts from this blob, but there will be another wave that is on its way uh, off the coast now, which will more than likely get highlighted here in the not too distant future uh, that will start to work its way this direction towards our major uh, development region where the water temperatures are warm, not a lot of shear, not a lot of dry air, and if this can get going, Boy, oh boy, are we going to have fun next week, guys. We could be watching a major tropical system or hurricane by the beginning of next week once this wave does, in fact, come off. So both the European and the GFS model do, in fact, agree that there will more than likely be some type of tropical system in this area at the beginning of next week. But until that gets highlighted, we'll kind of wait to talk about it. We'll kind of talk about what it looks like on the ensembles here in just a second. Uh, the Gulf right now, as I mentioned as well, not looking at any area of interest, but I'm still watching this tropical system uh, or disturbance of convection that could move into that area. And if it were to get organized, we could see an AOI pop up that area 
area of interest that the National Hurricane Center issues here. So we're going to keep you guys updated on that. As always, once again, we can breathe. We can have a sigh of relief. Be mindful what you guys see on social media. There's a lot of people talking crap. There's a lot of people that are not degreed that don't know what they're talking about. I'm not degreed. I know what I'm talking about. There's a little bit of a difference here with this. I use all of the evidence, all of the information that we have. I don't just show one model run and say, oh, a Cat 5 is going somewhere. That's not what we do here. So just be mindful. We give trusted, reliable weather coverage here. Some other people do not do that and don't even do weather coverage at all. So just be mindful of what you guys see on the social media side of things. Uh, let's talk about our ensembles here. This is the latest 12Z ensembles here on the GEFS, both, like I said, uh, the system that we have down here into the Atlantic, this is more than likely going to head out to sea. There will be another system. You can see these little squiggly lines here that are heading toward the Caribbean, the Leeward Islands, maybe even toward the United States. This is the second system. This is going to be after August 10th here. So once again, the National Hurricane Center will highlight something uh, here probably in the next couple of days talking about this, but the system that we are watching, that orange blob that I mentioned a minute ago, this will be heading out toward Bermuda, so I'm not expecting any impacts from that as of right now. If if something were to change, we'll let you guys know, but uh, we can breathe a little bit of sigh of relief on that one there. Uh, both the European and the GFS ensembles agree on that, and then the European ensembles also showing this system becoming a fish storm as well, and then we are watching that second area that will be coming off the coast of Africa next. This is what I also mentioned, watching that tropical system back over here into the Caribbean as well as the Gulf this weekend. Not really the Caribbean, but the Gulf this weekend. We could see uh, something spin up here over the next couple of days in and around the west side of Florida. I'm not sold on the idea of this yet. The GFS ensemble have backed off on it, but the European ensembles are pretty keen on something developing this weekend. So we'll see what happens over the next two or three days here. Uh, if NHC highlights something, I will 100% make a video to talk about it, um, and we'll get you guys that update as needed. But I think we can still breathe a sigh of relief here. There will be tropical downpours in and around the Gulf this weekend. Uh, if you are vacationing from like New Orleans over to like Tallahassee, for instance, there's going to be tropical system potential here, uh, but I'm not expecting anything too crazy right now. So we'll keep you guys updated on that. That is the tropical side of things. Let's talk about the severe weather because boy, oh boy, do we have a lot getting ready to happen in the next two days here? We have a level three uh, enhanced risk for tomorrow. Actually, let me go back and talk about today first. Let's start with that. Uh, we have a marginal risk here for today. Uh, this is up here in northern Minnesota. Wind and hail will be the primary threats. Another marginal risk back down here into the central plains and into the Midwest here. Wind and hail. We're not looking at any tornado risk today. Very, very low tornado risk today. If we were to get a spin up tornado somewhere, uh, it's going to be probably in the South Dakota, North Nebraska area between like Valentine Pier and maybe Western Iowa. I'm not seeing much of a tornado risk as of right now. Less than 2% but not zero. Wind threat at 5% and hail threat at 5%. Very low wind day today. No need for coverage, anything like that. Tomorrow is the big day. We have got a good agreement of our models, as at least as of right now through this morning and this afternoon, showing a very big wind bag event tomorrow. We could be seeing winds in excess of 60 to 80 plus miles per hour across uh, portions of Nebraska, getting into portions of, or not Nebraska, getting into North Dakota, getting into portions of South Dakota here. That level three enhanced risk out again for Bismarck, Fargo. You guys have just been battered and battered and battered and battered and it's very very normal for august that we see these wind bag events these big lines of storms these squall lines that come through because our jet stream favors that i've talked about a lot as we were in the month of july going into august here we were going to see this transition we were going to see the jet stream become very favorable for these big mcs's these wind bag events and that's what's happening so for anybody out there that doesn't think this is normal that this is cloud seeding or weather modification you might want to check climate change and you might want to check the fact that we see this almost every single year in july and august so it's very normal to see these events so if you're in the dakotas if you're in minnesota if you're in montana and you're like why is this happening? Why are we getting severe weather over and over? The jet stream is very, very favorable this time of the year because we have a high pressure ridge or a ridge that's typically to the south of that that promotes troughing over top of the ridge. And so once again, the threat for all modes of severe weather is on the table tomorrow. You need to be weather aware in all risk zones, marginal from Iowa all the way down to Illinois, Wisconsin, but our main risk zone is going to be Montana, North Dakota, the whole state of North Dakota, western and central Minnesota, and northern South Dakota here. We do have an elevated tornado risk tomorrow. Again, I wouldn't even rule out a strong tornado potentially embedded within a line of storms tomorrow that could happen, but we do have a 2 and a 5% tornado risk tomorrow. Bismarck, you're smack dab in the middle of that. Fargo, Grand Forks, Aberdeen, and a minute. You are in that as well. The Wind threat is the biggest thing I'm concerned about. We have a hatched wind threat, 30% and 15% tomorrow, meaning winds could exceed 80 miles per hour tomorrow. And if the models continue to pick up on what I think is going to happen tomorrow... We could maybe see a level four introduced. I don't know yet. We saw this happen last week. We had a level four risk introduced and it verified slash didn't verify. There's a whole bunch of controversy on that. Uh, we had a big wind event last week in Iowa that verified elsewhere. It did not, but we could see uh, uh, the same scenario again tomorrow and again on uh, Friday here as well. Winds could exceed 80 miles per hour tomorrow in and around that hatched area, the 15% or the 30%. We've got outside of that there, winds up to 70 uh, in the 15 and 5% regions there. But North Dakota looks to be the biggest areas, Aberdeen up to Bismarck there, Grand Fork and Fargo. You were 
also in that. And then we have a large hail threat initially as storms get going here. We can see hail in excess of two to three inches in diameter in that hatched region there. Bismarck uh, Minute. I know I've got a lot of people that watch my streams and in my uh, videos in North Dakota as well as in South Dakota and Minnesota. So just be smart, be weather aware. We're going to do a live stream. We're going to talk about this later on this afternoon and tomorrow we'll be covering this fully for you guys as always here. Uh, we've also got, uh, once again, that hail threat, like I said, 15 to 5% outside of the hatched area and then 5% over in Wisconsin. So a big, big day tomorrow, guys, for severe weather. We'll talk about what that looks like here on the models in just a moment. We've also got severe weather again. And if you're like, wait, why are we getting this again? This is a copy and paste. You're right. It is a copy and paste. We're going to see the same system uh, again on Friday here. A level three enhanced risk once again from Grand Forks down to Fargo, Aberdeen, Bismarck. You're a little bit outside of that higher risk zone there, but this gets closer to Minneapolis, the Twin Cities, Valentine, Sioux Falls, Aberdeen. All of you guys in these risk zones, level three, level two, and level one again tomorrow. And we do have a hatched area once again. This will more than likely be for the threat for tornadoes. Maybe a couple of strong tornadoes on Friday here. We've got the threat for winds potentially up to 80 miles per hour and large hail up to three inches in diameter. We'll have a better update on this tonight. Uh, I think I'm going to probably stay up till about 1 a.m. tonight and wait for an SPC update, and I'll post a video tonight for you guys once day one and day two update so you guys can have an early morning update, and then we'll post again tomorrow, and we'll cover tomorrow. So uh, we, we've got enough time to get you guys ready to go. We'll talk about this over the next day or two here as we get you all ready to go. We'll cover this in live event as well. Uh, but once again, just a very, very, very dangerous day over the next two days if you are in the upper plains and Midwest and northern high plains, as we could see uh, multiple different scenarios here happen, either a windbag event, a tornado setup, or all three together with the hail. So said so that we're watching everybody else will be mostly quiet and then we get to the day four through eight i'll look here and we've just got uh, the chance for severe weather going into sunday going into saturday maybe even early towards next week so i think severe weather next week will start to be limited as we see a new pattern set up once again with a higher ridge and troughing up in canada which will limit severe weather so we'll keep you guys updated on that i'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the scenarios for today and then i'm going to leave the video at that um, i won't do a global pattern run today since i'm already running over 10 minutes on this video i want to keep this a little bit briefer for you guys today we'll talk more about globally on stream this afternoon but here is the we're going to show three different models we're going to show the her the nam 3k and the rufus so you guys can get an idea on the consistency and the agreement that the models have on a big event unfolding tomorrow so we got the her model for tomorrow afternoon uh storms will be firing off this afternoon not too super concerned about uh the super cell threat this afternoon some wind and hail primary will be the main threats down into iowa this afternoon for any of those storms that develop and then we get to tomorrow and i want you guys to see this super cells initially with large hail tomorrow afternoon around 2 to 4 p.m central time a couple tornadoes can't be ruled out and then that low level jet kicks in out of the southwest with that mid-level jet streak moving over top of our system and we're going to see a windbag event set up and here we go again this looks to be a very familiar setup for you guys here in north dakota a huge squall line here with winds up to 80 plus miles per hour possibly ripping through uh portions of bismarck here you got this going through minnesota this would go be a uh, late evening through overnight event for you guys so something we're watching very very closely tomorrow uh you can see the estimated wind gust reports here i'll pull this up so you guys can see that this just kind of gives us an idea of what we could see top notch uh, for wind gust wise. And we can see wind gusts over 75 easily tomorrow here. Here comes the event tomorrow afternoon. Those yellows and gold you see popping up. Some very, very strong winds. So um, I'm getting concerned. I don't like to see this. I do think if this trends through this afternoon and tonight, we could see a bump up level for moderate risk for damaging winds uh, if the Storm Prediction Center feels fit once again. And you guys have seen about three of those this year, two of those this year. This will be the third if it were to happen. So we're watching that very, very closely uh, for you guys for tomorrow. That is the HER model. We got the NAM 3K for tomorrow as well, showing the same uh, exact situation here i'll pull this up here let me go back to reflectivity uh once again the nam 3k showing the exact same scenario for tomorrow just a little bit further to the south but a, another big wind event here again tomorrow night so uh, the, the theme is going to be wind and like i said this is a very normal thing when you have the pattern set up like this ridging and troughing on top of that and then we have the rufus for tomorrow once again the storms initiating up in northern uh, north dakota around 4 to 5 p.m and then we get a huge wind event and then here's kind of what an, in a nutshell friday could look like we could see another squall line on friday afternoon through the overnight hours with supercell tornado risk hail threat and uh that tornado threat as well there so a lot of different things getting ready to happen guys over the next two days we'll keep you guys updated as always i'll have video updates as quick as i possibly can get them out to you guys as things change we'll also have live streams as well we'll be covering tomorrow fully in depth and friday fully in depth as always i appreciate y'all stay safe be weather aware share this out to your loved ones and we will see you guys in the next one